everybody. I'm Vera Stewart and welcome to The Very Vera Show. You know, we seem to be celebrating a lot of birthdays right now, but honestly, my birthday and my husband's birthday are about a month apart. And we got married on his birthday. So some years we celebrate the anniversary, some years we celebrate the birthday, but today I'm going to celebrate some of his favorite dishes. Some of them he makes himself and some of them I make for him. So we're going to start with the grilled cabbage au gratin. His favorite vegetable is cabbage. And this is a recipe that will be in the next cookbook. I think you'll love it. And then the next recipe is chicken cacciatore. Honestly, this is when I found out that he really knew how to cook. Came home one night and the house smelled wonderful. So this is another recipe that will be in the next cookbook. And then his favorite sweet is cinnamon rolls. This recipe is really great. So I'm ready to take off this poncho and get in the kitchen with that cabbage dish. All right, so this grilled cabbage au gratin. I mean, I've said many times in my catering business, sometimes you just have to come up with a new name for a dish. And I could have just said cabbage au gratin but you add the word grill to it and now you're just pulling everybody in. It just sounds delicious. And doesn't it look delicious? So this is one of the recipes in the new book. And as I said, my husband loves cabbage. It is his favorite vegetable. We could eat it every night. So I was trying to come up with something that would be a little bit different other than just boiled cabbage every time. So this is a very different recipe. So we had a little bit we had to do in advance. So we started with a head of cabbage that you're just cutting into wedges. And then once you've done that, one of the most enjoyable aspects of this induction cooktop is it has a boost feature and it also has a bridge feature. So on the two eyes that are together, I put my lodge griddle and I can bridge the two together and you've got even heat. I sprayed it with a little bit of oil. Then I put those wedges on there for about two to three minutes aside. Just let it get some good grill marks on it and then transferred it to my cutting board and cut it into ribbons. Put that in a bowl. The next thing I did was to get my leeks ready and those were just chopped up basically into circles. And then I melted butter and olive oil in my saute pan and cooked those for about three to five minutes till they were nice and tender. Now I've got to get my pan ready that this is gonna cook in. So just any, any of your favorite Pyrex pans, whether it's round or square, rectangle, you wanna butter it, and then you're gonna put your Parmesan cheese and your breadcrumbs in the bottom of the pan. So it's like a nice base at the bottom when you serve it. All right, so now this has absolutely cooked down. I've added my cabbage back in to this and I've cooked it down with the leeks so you can just see that it's still maintained a really beautiful color and it looks delicious. So let's get the au gratin part done. So I've got two eggs in my mixing bowl. Just break those egg yolks up. Now I'm gonna add heavy cream to that. And you know, my grandmother always, she got every little bit off of the butter wrapper, off the, the glass that she was putting liquid in. So I, I find myself doing that too, and it's a, it's a fond memory of her. All right, so this is kind of whisked together. Now I've got Gruyere cheese, I'm gonna add to that. Flour. Kosher salt black pepper, caraway seeds, cardamom, and nutmeg. So just think about some of these ingredients. And even if you were just gonna boil cabbage instead of just salt and pepper and butter, you might wanna think about one of these other seasonings that you know is in this recipe. All right, so now I'm turning the heat off on this pan. It was just kind of simmering a little bit. The other nice feature of this induction cooktop is that once you turn it off, it's off. So it looks a little bit like the ones, the flat top ones that have to remind you and warn you that it's still hot. You don't have any warning with this one at all. All right, so I'm gonna transfer this to the au gratin mixture. I mean, does that just look amazing? This would be so good with a pork chop or tenderloin, you know, even a steak. All right, so let's just blend this together. 
and I like to fold it, you know, because you do want some of that egg to make it fluff up. And then I'm gonna add this to my prepared pan. I've got my oven preheated to 375. Look at that. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> so good. All right, I'm gonna top this with some more cheese and I'll pop this in the oven. And when we come back, we're gonna get started on Old Jones's Chicken catch a toy, so you don't want to miss it. Come right back. Welcome back, everybody. And if you're just joining me, I'm celebrating my husband's birthday today. You know, we've had a lot of birthdays right around together, and um, his birthday really means something to me because it is also our anniversary. So this recipe for chicken cacciatore is absolutely one of my favorites. I will never forget coming in from work because my husband is a retired attorney. So he's been retired for a couple of years. And I walked in one night and I could just, the house just smelled amazing. I said, what in the world? He said, well, I made chicken cacciatore. And I went, what? All these years, I didn't know you knew how to do this. So this recipe really, really means something to us and to our family. And it's also in the next cookbook. So I'm really excited about making this for you today. So we had a few things that we had to do in advance. Um, you can use chicken breast for this recipe, but we actually really love dark meat. So we always use chicken thighs. So any poultry really has to be seasoned. You really have to add salt and pepper to it. It's gonna look like a lot when you're doing it, but you really do need to get that seasoning there. So I salt and peppered both sides of the chicken breast. Then in terms of dredging it in flour, I really prefer to use a Ziploc bag and you know just shake it up in the bag and get that ready. Then my saute pan, I put um, oil and butter in it just to get this crisp. So once you've got that nice and hot, you've dredged your chicken thighs, then I put it in for about five minutes aside just to get a nice crisp brownness to the outside of the chicken. Now you're gonna think, that doesn't look done, Vera, but it's gonna cook the rest of the way on top of the stove after we've finished with everything else. Okay, once I pulled that off and I drained it on paper towels, then I had some cut up bacon that I put in. And this is just another added feature of this recipe, which makes it unique to him because he puts bacon drippings in everything. <laughs> so the, probably the original recipe for this didn't call for that, but he did this. Then you've got Vidalia onions and baby portobellas that I'm gonna then add to the pan that now has bacon drippings added to it as well. You're gonna cook those just long enough for them to, the onions to get translucent, the mushrooms to get just a really good tenderness to them. All right, so that's where I am right now. So now I'm ready to add the other ingredients to this. So we're gonna start with garlic, and I've got this on about a medium heat. And then this is just diced tomatoes, canned diced tomatoes. Add those in. And then I've got pimento. So this is another part of this that's really makes this recipe so good. All right, vermouth. So sometimes recipes like this call for white wine, but the fact that this calls for vermouth is just another part of the flavor profile that I love. Okay, chicken broth. And today in Vera's Corner, I'm actually going to give you tips on how to make your own. And he honestly makes chicken broth. Every time we cook a whole chicken, he boils those parts and makes that broth. And we keep it in the freezer to pull out when we're making dishes like this. Bay leaf and the other seasonings, thyme, oregano, and crushed red pepper. Okay, so I'm gonna get this mixed in and we're gonna bring this to a boil. And you know, this recipe might take a few minutes to do, but it's one of those that is so worth it at the end. So once this comes to a boil, I'm gonna add my chicken back in and the bacon. I'm gonna put a lid on it. It's gonna cook for about 45 to 50 minutes till you've got the internal temperature correct on that. All right, so when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on cinnamon rolls. And don't forget Vera's Corner and the homemade chicken broth. So I'll see you back in just a few minutes.
Vera's Corner is brought to you by Tax Slayer. You know, chicken stock may seem like an intimidating ingredient to make on your own, but today I'm going to give you some tips on how to take your cooking skills to the next level by making the chicken stock yourself. Anytime you chop an onion, carrot, celery, hold on to the leftovers, peels and end pieces that you might otherwise throw away. Of course, you can't make chicken stock without chicken, so hold on to your chicken bones or carcass when you cook a chicken. The skin won't do much for your stock, so don't worry about freezing that with the bones. Start a stock bag in the freezer where these scraps can go until you have enough to make a batch of stock. When you're ready, add your stock ingredients to a large stock pot or the biggest pot with the lid that you have. Cover the stock ingredients with water, leaving about two to three inches of room at the top of the pot. Add some whole peppercorns, a bay leaf, and kosher salt if you would like your chicken stock to be pre-seasoned. Bring to a boil, then cover and turn the heat to low. Simmer covered for three to six hours. Remove the large pieces in your stock with a slotted spoon. Then ladle the liquid through a fine mesh sieve into your storage container. Your stock will keep for about four days in the refrigerator, or you can freeze it up to six months. Once you've tried homemade stock, you'll never want to buy it again. Start free today at TaxSlayer.com. Welcome back everybody, and I really hope you'll try that idea for chicken stock because it is amazing to have that when you're making a soup or anything that calls for that to have it homemade in the freezer to thaw out. Okay, so I will have to say that my husband would probably eat these every single night. This is an absolute favorite in our cooking camp. The children love to make these. We actually let them take them home in little small containers. You know, they eat them, of course, during camp. They take them home and share them with their family. They get to bake them when they get home, so it's just fantastic. All right, so I've already got my dough made, but I want to talk to you about how I did that. So basically the dough is flour, sugar, baking soda, baking powder, and salt. You're going to whisk that together just in a medium-sized bowl. Your liquid for this is melted butter and buttermilk. So add about half of the buttermilk, get that stirred around, then put the rest of it in, and it's going to be, it's going to hold together pretty good, but it's not going to be completely solid until you take it out onto a floured surface and knead it just a little bit. You don't want to over knead it, but you want it to come together. And then I like to kind of pat it out before I start using my rolling pin. So I floured my cutting board. And what you're looking for is about a nine by 12 inch rectangle. So I've rolled that out, I've got it good to go. Now I'm gonna brush the top of this dough with some melted butter. And this is just, I mean, the dough itself is, is, you know, and it's not that hard to do. And the kids absolutely love that they could say they made the whole recipe from scratch. All right, so now the filling that goes in this is so good. We've got brown sugar, regular granulated sugar, cinnamon, nutmeg, salt, and I'm just gonna mix that together and then add my melted butter to that. And you know, to me, a cinnamon roll has got to have a lot of filling. And you know, if you wanted to, you could add, you know, some of our Pearson pecans to this if you wanted to have nuts in the cinnamon rolls too. All right, I've got my melted butter. And again, get every little bit out of that bowl. And then this is going to go all the way across this dough. Okay, so let's just dump it out and then I'll spread it about. And you know, this could get easily coming out from behind the edges of this dough. So once I've spread it, I'm actually going to press it into the dough. So, you know, this is one of those things that I also like to point out that if you're gonna get in the kitchen and do something like this, make several recipes. 
because they freeze well. And you know, there's nothing better than taking something like this if you're invited to a friend's house for the weekend to walk in with the bread and butter gift being something that you actually made yourself that y'all could enjoy for breakfast. Even if they've already got a plan, nobody's gonna turn away a homemade sweet roll. All right, so now I'm ready to roll from the long edge up. And so just kind of get, get it started. It's gonna take just a minute. But it, roll, it really rolls up really nicely. And I'm gonna get a dozen rolls out of this recipe. Look at that. Okay, so once you get to the end, just kind of bring it back towards you. All right, so I'm gonna pinch the ends and pinch the ends there. All right, actually I didn't mash that sugar down into there, but I'm just gonna hope it's gonna stay. But I do want you to take your hands and mash that down. All right, so I've got a serrated knife. I'm gonna make a mark in the center. I wanna get six on this end and six on that end. So I'll do center again, and then one, two, three, one, two, three. Same thing over here. And then you've got an even distribution. All right, so let's see how these cut. I've got my pan prepared with aluminum foil. I put that in the center. I buttered the bottom of the pan. Then I put the aluminum foil in and put some more melted butter. And when you put these in, the reason you do this is when you take them out of the oven, you're gonna lift that off onto your cooling rack and it makes them cool a lot faster. And these 12 will fit in here perfectly. All right, so when we come back from the break, we're gonna get everything laid out that's Jones's favorite, all of his favorite dishes. And then we'll give you some more tips about what to do for birthdays. Welcome back everybody and the kitchen smells so great and we've had the best time today celebrating my husband Andy Kilpatrick that I call Jones his birthday and also our anniversary. So hopefully some of these recipes intrigued you and you'll try them. They're always available on our website at verybeer.com. But I also want to mention that our book, new book, is in pre-sale right now. So if you go to our website and click on cookbook, you can look through the pages. We have a flip book there. You can also watch a video that tells you a little bit about behind the scenes and making the book. And you can pre-order the book. We will ship it for free if you do this in pre-order and I will also sign it for free. So I hope you'll check that out. All right, so let's go through the recipes we made today. We started with the grilled cabbage au gratin and this dish is so delicious. I mean, it. my husband loves cabbage. It's his absolute favorite. This just bakes up so well and it still stays creamy on the inside. And you know, with um, St. Patrick's Day coming up, this will be a great dish to celebrate St. Patrick's Day. So just remember that this, you know, you can double the recipe if you're gonna have more people. This will probably last in your refrigerator for a couple of days and would zap really well in the microwave. All right, the chicken cacciatore. And again, this is when I knew that my husband needed to be making dinner and not me. The vegetables and the broth in the bottom of this becomes a fantastic gravy for your rice. Just look how colorful. That is, I'm gonna make sure I get some of that bacon on there. And then just the way the thighs cooked, just really great. And you know, this is a dish that if you're a newlywed or if you've not made anything special for your boyfriend lately or your husband, I would highly recommend taking a chance on this recipe. I love to use really, really nice Parmesan to top dishes like this and a little bit of fresh parsley. All right, so the finale are the cinnamon rolls and these just baked up so well. As you'll notice, my hot casserole and this hot pan were put directly on my star granite countertop. So again, this is one of their features that you don't even have to worry about it. But I did put a cooling rack here because when you bake these and take them out of the oven, you can just lift the aluminum foil out of the pan directly onto a cooling rack 
the air is going to circulate and it comes, you know, they cool great. Then your icing, remember I made this, it was very easy. It's cream cheese, powdered sugar, buttermilk, and a little bit of vanilla. And I love, you know, some of it is soaked in, so I might put a little bit more on there. But this is just a great treat, wonderful dish to take. And then, you know, just look how beautifully they come together. All right, so I want to say quickly that my husband, if you had to describe him, he's an avid golfer. He's played golf his entire life. He shot his age or below for the 230th time. And if you're a golfer, you know that that is remarkable. He is also a great fisherman and has enjoyed that his whole life. And he loves the low country and fishing, one of his greatest pastimes. So all of our fans down there in the WSAV area, we love that part of the country. So happy birthday, Jones. And again, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. Please come back and join us next week.